I wonder if we attracted any vegan fairy boys with that title and don't worry about me making fun of them because if they actually watch this video they'll be too distracted by my biceps to hear what I'm saying. And for the brief period of time I get to watch TV every day, I am bombarded by conventional health wisdom. It's no coincidence that my parents had the three most popular nuts in their cabinet as they've been brainwashed by that conventional health wisdom their whole lives. They believe this stuff is genuinely healthy. Whole grains, eat your fruits and vegetables, red meat is the devil. Don't look at an egg, your heart's gonna explode. Big Nut has a big load they need to sell because just about every individual nut has their own advertising campaign. Irresistibly delicious, pour some mom and breathe. For the maestros of the creamiest ever must have smoothies. It's irresistibly delicious, more mom and breathe, please. Wonderful pistachios. Get your protein from a greener source. Wonderful pistachios, the original plant-based protein. Hey, bud, how's pajama day? I mean, it's go picture day. No. Life isn't always simple, but here's something that is. Heart healthy California walnuts. So simple, so good. Now those are the three I've recently seen commercials on. We did do a video several months ago on peanut butter. Before that, we covered omega-6 fatty acids, specifically linoleic acid, how it's dangerous. So some of this stuff might sound familiar, but the principle is simple. I don't think these foods should be included in any diet in any considerable amount, maybe a few times per month in very small amounts if you have access to high quality, organic, specific types of nuts. You know, it's weird how the vegan boys know so much about nuts and loads and they don't know which ones you should actually be eating. I guess they're not focusing on the right kind, huh? From a natural procurement perspective, every nut and seed is far too labor intensive to be considered a staple of every human diet. You know, the amount of farming and processing infrastructure we have set up now has made an unrealistic source of nutrition a staple in most people's diets. In nature, these trees are specific to certain parts of the world. Not every group of people has access to them. Even if they did, you know, the trees are only ripe small portions of the year. And you would guarantee the foraging animals, the hogs, the boars would get to them first. And you might only have a handful of these and probably spend more calories procuring them, cracking them open than they would actually give you. I mean, you're not going to beat a squirrel to a nut. Modern methods have allowed us to plant many trees in close proximity, use mechanical harvesting and processing to remove the calorically intensive labor aspect. Walnuts and almonds have a very hard outer shell that needs to be removed, whereas pistachios are actually the seed of a fruit that is inedible for humans. And there's been a whole lot of publicity about things like cashews requiring basically slave labor in other countries, but the you never hear vegans talking badly about their cashew bullshit salad dressing, do you? Although you could argue that most plant foods in general are unrealistic to procure compared to caloric nutrition from animal foods, especially things that are easy to harvest like shellfish, you know, vegetables or grains are far more practical than nuts, actually doable with hand tools and work animals. And before we even get into the nutrition, paper value vitamins and minerals, plant-based fatty acids that don't actually work, we have to consider how the nuts are grown and stored. You know, this isn't going to be, you know, a normie video about calories or fats. You know, those factors are irrelevant if the food quality in your diet is high. You know, someone saying that you shouldn't snack on nuts because you could eat three, 400 calories real quick. They, they have no clue about nutrition. No clue at all. The problem starts with the chemicals, the pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, what I like to refer to as agrochemicals that are sprayed on the nuts. And that's because the crops are very vulnerable, very expensive, and the farmers use those chemicals to prevent monetary losses. You know, over 85% of almonds are treated with glyphosate, well known to cause cancer. Moth infestations have caused walnut growers to spray tons of insecticides. 
pistachios are sprayed with phosmid, which is a pesticide that causes cancer. There are dozens and dozens of different chemicals, toxins. You can just Google toxins in nuts and studies will come up saying that they found all of these pollutants and bad stuff in these nuts. You know, since the nuts are high in fat, they're very prone to absorbing these chemicals. Point being, they're not safe to eat. On top of that, almonds are destroying California ecosystems. You, know, you could probably do a whole video documentary on that. So if you go organic, you can reduce and sort of eliminate most of those chemical concerns, but organic nuts are very expensive, very difficult to find. If you go to Whole Foods even, you won't see them on the shelf for most of them. And that's because most farming infrastructure is not set up for organic. You know, even if you do find organic nuts, keep in mind how they're processed and stored. You know, the nuts have to be deshelled and washed. Definitely some concerns about chemicals leaching from the water they're using. Many are dry heated, so the raw marketing can be deceptive as you can heat a product below 117 degrees Fahrenheit and still mark it as raw. That can make the fats a lot more oxidized. And we also have mycotoxins and aflatoxins, toxins produced by fungus that tend to grow on nuts and seeds being stored. This is a problem with grains as well. The current food system is not about fresh, local, sustainable, constant turnover. They care more about maximizing yield numbers, you know, throwing the product in a warehouse for months, even years, and getting it to the consumer in some form with a reasonable appearance. You know, no expectations of composition or safety. As I said earlier, I won't be going in depth on omega fatty acid ratios, why the omega-6 is harmful, because I've done video series on that. I will quickly say that the body cannot utilize the omega-3s in nuts, convert them properly due to the high omega-6 content inhibiting certain enzymes. And some nuts are better than others, meaning they're lower in omega-6. So walnuts are incredibly high in omega-6, even though they have more omega-3 and a better ratio than most. Pistachios are moderate, almonds being slightly lower. Macadamia and coconut actually being two that I include personally in my diet. And you wanna focus more on having a low omega-6 intake overall, as opposed to the specific ratio in the diet. You know, it's better to consume one gram of omega-6 and no omega-3 fatty acids, as opposed to 10 grams of omega-6 and five grams of omega-3. You know, you're overloading your body with both as opposed to just having a little bit of something bad. Moving on to phytic acid phytates, which is the plant storage form of phosphorus, an anti-nutrient that can bind to minerals in your own body. It varies over 20 fold depending on the mineral content of the soil. So it's kind of hard to address here and it's not really relevant. It does give you kind of a reason to, you know, soak your nuts for a few days in, soak your nuts, in salted water to reduce that phytic acid content. But in reality, the agrochemical concerns and the toxin concerns far exceed any anti-nutrients. And that really applies to you know, all grains, vegetables, and fruits. As long as you prepare them properly, anti-nutrients aren't that big of a deal. Maybe in my next day of eating, I'll show you guys how I incorporate you know, some macadamia nuts, some coconut into my diet. I know you guys see me cook with coconut oil sometimes and I, I use it in the cookies, but uh, we'll add some things here and there for variety. I actually think I even have now this is organic hazelnut spread with cocoa that I have once in a while. This is just cane sugar hazelnut paste. You know, it's, it's not ideal, it's not the best, but having you know a couple tablespoons of this per month isn't the end of the world. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and make sure to click that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. If you can please just visit my channel every day. Uh, that would help a lot. And above that, you can share my video on other social media sources. Thanks again for joining me, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow.